Hey, 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 I, I'm sick, that's why my voice sounds cool. Um, finished this probably three or four days ago and really liked it a lot. This is my first Kim Stanley Robinson book that I've ever attempted and I blasted right through it in under a week, I think. Really impressed, really impressed. This is right up my alley. I anticipated it being boring because that's how it's been pitched to me by a few people. Uh, it's this dry, hard sci-fi epic that's boring, slowly paced. So the basic premise is it's a near future tale of the first uh, colonizing mission to Mars, to settle Mars uh, for human habitation. And it follows a, a crew of a hundred scientists and experts who are sent on this colony ship to Mars and have to bootstrap when they land and uh, build civilization from scratch all over again. And they carry with them all of the old conflicts of Earth, all of the ideological conflicts, uh, religious conflicts, all of the um, uh, moral and ethical quandaries that uh, we're familiar with. I really can't say much more about the plot without getting into spoilers. The book really is character driven. There's an ensemble cast of main characters and the narration is third, I don't, there's like a technical literary term for it. It's not third person, person omniscient, it's third person specific or something, or it's, it's third person narration, but uh, only from the perspective of individual single characters. And the narration shifts from character to character um, periodically. And the characters are beautifully well drawn. So it's a, a tough feat to pull off to write a hard sci-fi book that's also character driven and the characters are really good. So despite how many characters there are in this book, they are all distinctly drawn. They're all very plausible characters. They're believable. They feel very real. And I've not read a hard sci-fi book that did a better job of characterization than this. Most of the time, uh, an author that can write credible hard sci-fi cannot write credible human interest nearly as well. Werner Vinge is the first one that comes to mind. He's probably my favorite sci-fi author, but his characterization is weak. That's his, his weakness as an author. And Kim Stanley Robinson um, does not, this book is not as interesting as Fire Upon the Deep or Deepness in the Sky, but it does have this weight, this weight of authority of he really does know what he's talking about and there's a lot of real science in the book that doesn't tend to occlude the characters. And it's, um, it's a genuinely interesting and compelling story with uh, emotional stakes and I got surprisingly attached to these characters. It doesn't usually happen in sci-fi for me. But I was really drawn in. I really was um, uh, affected emotionally by, by a lot of the characters in the book and their story arcs. The quality of the writing is excellent. He's not Gene Wolfe, this isn't high literature, but it's not that far off. He can turn a phrase. So this book does have flaws, as could be predicted, because every book does. The biggest one that comes to mind is, I sure hope you like space geography, because you're going to get a whole lot of it, a lot of descriptions of the topography of Mars and uh, ecological systems at play and... Uh, how continents are formed in very specific descriptions of landforms and land masses and the history of, of, of how the planet uh, has changed over the eons. And it's, it's less boring than it sounds, but it, is, it can be an overpowering flavor at times. And by the end of the book, uh, I had trouble really giving a shit about um, his you know lyrical description of the face of some cliff and giving a detailed account of uh, of all the geological forces that shaped it i just kind of stopped caring also there is a map at the beginning of the book which is kind of useful because there are a lot of specific place names and the characters zip around all over the planet up down left right and it's hard to get your bearings in terms of having a real sense of uh, uh, scale or orientation in terms of the, the scenes and locations of the book. It didn't add to the sense of place, which the book does have, 
the planet as a whole has this this tangible sense of being a real place. I really felt that this was a story rooted in a setting that felt very, very real uh, and seductive. The 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 plane he gave Mars a lot of character, other than just being this dusty red rock in space. There's this payoff towards the end of the book where he, Robinson spends all of these hundreds of pages building up this world that feels uh, engrossing and real that's separate from Earth and Earth is kind of lingering in the background and all of its problems and they refer to it periodically and then pseudo spoiler the chickens come home to roost and they find that they have not been able to escape Earth's problems, both on uh, the philosophical and political level in terms of the conflicts at play among the colonists, and just in a material, immediate sense of uh, problems being born out on Mars that carry over from Earth, literally. And there's a, a philosophical thrust to this book that I, it suits me. I really like it. I, I do like leftist sci-fi because that's my personal political disposition. I'm happy to read uh, conservative science fiction. Some of my favorite authors are, are right-wingers. Actually, Werner Vinge, it turns out, is a libertarian. Robert Silverberg is a conservative. Heinlein, I don't like. But Gene Wolfe, conservative Catholic, etc. So I'm not allergic whatsoever to uh, right-wing sci-fi, but this is definitely conspicuously left-wing sci-fi, which I, I prefer. I do prefer it, and I like it. And it's carried out really, really well, deftly, less ambiguously than Ursula Le Guin, which is a touchstone author for Robinson. Uh, there are kind of, I think, direct nods to the dispossessed throughout the book. And um, it turns out that Robinson studied under Le Guin, which makes sense because tonally and in terms of the quality of the writing, they're kind of similar. But Robinson is uh, you know, less afraid to kind of show his hand. So it is space allegory for the dangers of capitalism and... Um, uh, ecological malfeasance and it works it's really good it it didn't punch me in the gut in the way that blindsight did few books have of course that's the book that I read before this one that one was like ringing a gong I couldn't stop thinking it, uh, about it and kind of chewing it over for I would say a solid week after that it was forefront in my mind for at least 48 hours I could think about little else this didn't really have that effect. It does lack that that extra little 10% X factor of it being truly magical. The ending was not really that that gratifying to me. And this is obviously part of a trilogy and was written consciously as such. So one wouldn't anticipate the ending being a wrap up to all of the dangling loose threads. But was really committed to this book and really, really enjoyed almost all of it. Um, giving it an 8 out of 10 for sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if this cracked into my top 15 books. I, I <laughs> So I finished this and I picked up Dune right afterwards and I've been sick so I've just been eating through it. That's what I've read so far in the past I think 48 hours or something. And I want to comment about a parallel here that jumps out at me probably just because I read these back to back. but. The pacing is very similar in these two books. So if you like Dune and you're not bored by it, which I'm not, but it's, it is it is borderline kind of boring in parts. I know that might be heretical to say, but Red Mars is paced basically very similarly to Dune. It's, uh, it just, it has a little bit of inertia that drags down. It creates these kind of bellies in, in the story but they're they're not distended bellies you know it still moves along it's still fast paced enough that it will hold your attention not quite a page turner and neither is this but just this big sumptuous chunk of world building and the world is, is fairly um you know there are direct parallels to dune also so uh that's that reading dune We'll be reviewing Dune, and then I'm equally tempted 
to read some palate cleanser or non-sci-fi and to jump into Dahlgren by Samuel Delaney just to keep up the trend of big fat epic books about desert planets. So we'll see what happens. Kim Stanley Robinson, thumbs up from me.